Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm here for the Tis the Season 12 Days of Holiday Scrapping Videos vlog hop. It's day six, so I'm responsible to use six different items in my project. And today I'm going to do that using a cut file from my digital cut file store called Just Nick. And I'm going to use this cut file here called Frosted Window Panes, which is free today only. I'll get to that a little bit later on. So you can see that I have cut that out just some white cardstock. And I'm just going to grab my six different pattern papers here. And these are all left over from the City Sidewalks kit by Scrapbook and Card Today magazine. It was the winter kit, the layout kit. And most of it's uh, crepe paper, snow and cocoa, but there's also some of the new Simple Stories Christmas line in there as well. And so I'm just going to use uh, probably both sides for the most part of those six pattern papers. So I'm just going to go ahead and with my dot runner, you can see I add a little bit of adhesive to the back of my cut design and then I just really add in little tiny bits of paper. This is really good to use um, really tiny small scraps if you keep them like I do. I keep way too many scraps but it's perfect for filling a background. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just keep on going. I st usually start with one kind of pattern paper, work it around through the whole cut file design, and then I'm going to go in with another pattern paper and do the same thing um, over and over again. You can see I filled in most of it. If I showed the whole thing, we would be here for like an hour because it probably took a good half an hour or so to do this much. And I ended up not using one of the papers that I chose, and I used this gold glitter cardstock instead, just to add a little bit of extra sparkle um, to my project. And my only tip I can probably give for this is you can either, if you don't want to do it the way I'm doing it right now, you can um, use the empty spots from the cut file when you take it off your mat to use it like a tracer. Um, but be sure you also, when you choose paper to be backed into each of these spaces here, you choose some neutral patterns, which in this case the gold and that craft dot work as the neutral. And then some that are like multicolored, so like this wavy kind of one you see there on the right hand side. Um, that's a good neutral that brings several colors together um, to make it all kind of work. So, you know, the pink and the blue that are in this cuff file kind of all go together because they're melded with that one pattern paper. So for something like this, I, that's what going to be white on white, I like to add foam dots in behind just to get a little bit of natural shadow on the project when I'm done. So it's going to kind of go there on my page, and it's still a little bland, so I'm going to add just to the background. I want to keep it mostly white, but I add some dots with my pink Mr. Hueys, and then gold, use a little gold color shine, um, shake it up pretty good, and then I'm going to add some blobs, and you can see... One blob a little too much for me, so I try to suck it up a little, but it's still a pretty big gold schmear kind of in the, right in the middle of my layout. And uh, so I have to cover that up a little bit later on because it bothers me. But you can see kind of as it dries, it got a little darker there too. So I'm just peeling off all that foam adhesive, and then I'm going to put it into the corner of my project. Um, and then really from there, I'm just going to kind of try to finish off with the little bits I have left over from my kit. I find I work better with the little bits than with the big sheets of paper. Uh, that's just kind of my thing, but we'll see how it goes in the end. Who knows? Maybe it will not turn out well. You never know when you get started what you have in your head if it actually works when you're done, right? All right, so I have my photo here of my daughter last year, and I'm going to use just some of the more neutral patterns from those six papers this black kind of musical note one, and then this um, that swirly one again to bring in just kind of all the colors in around the photo. And I'm going to mount the photo later with some foam dots, but it's going to get kind of tucked up into that corner. And I have these letters left over from the kit as well. They're from a pink paisley winter collection last year. I want to say it's called Yuletide, but I'm at the moment not 100% sure, and I don't even remember where I put those letters now. But I decided that I liked the white, but they're just it's just too much white with the white from the cut file and the white from the background. So I want to add some gold embossing powder along the letters here just to kind of pretty them up a little bit. So at first I was going to do one line and then I decided um, that, you know, we would do a bunch of different uh, measures of the gold. And that's kind of like a snowbank, right? There's not one big line of snowbanks, at least not on my street. So I'm just going to add some gold. This is a Galaxy Gold Dewdrop ink to the bottom of the letters. And that's just to kind of cover up where the gold embossing powder might not stick later on. Because I am not a good embosser, which I'm sure you'll hear me say three or four times. Because it is not my specialty whatsoever. So I'm just going to add my embossing powder. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and take off that washi tape before I heat emboss because it will just peel up anyway from the heat, drying it off a little bit too much, that sticky glue. So I'm going to quickly peel that off and you can see kind of the line that that embossing makes or is about to make anyway. It's kind of pretty. You could do the same effect without embossing powder and just, you know, inking it up and then peeling it off. But I like the kind of like the extra little texture that the embossing powder adds. So here we go. So I'm just going to just gotta make sure, sorry about that, I hit my camera. Just want to make sure A, you don't burn your fingers and that you get a good coverage. So I do find as I did this that I wasn't getting a good coverage because I think my ink just got too dry before I got the embossing powder on. So I'm just going to heat it up and as I heat it up it kind of melts it a little that you can get more embossing powder to stick and which is good and then it just kind of makes an extra little layer on top. So you could definitely go in again and ink it all again and then add it all on again but uh, this is my quick and quick way of doing it. So I'm just going to go over again. You can kind of see how it's even just melting there in the video just very slightly. I know it's hard with the light, darn overhead lights, um, to see exactly how it worked. But it turned out pretty nice in the end. I have a close-up I'll show you at the end of the video. And I, yeah, two, three times is what I probably, for something like this, I normally would do this over and over and over again. A little time intensive, I guess you could say, but I think the result is worth it in the end. You don't have just plain boring white letters anymore. Something a little different. And in this case, you get a little sparkle, which is good, we know, with snow and sparkly things. So yeah, there we go. So now I'm just going to tidy up a bit and then get my photo and all my items onto my project. I'm using some foam adhesive just to get it kind of to the same level that the die cut background is. And now I'm going to play around with where I want to put my photo. So at first I thought I would put it at the top, but now I'm just going to stick it on the bottom. And I can't handle that feeling of that embossing powder everywhere, so I had to clean that up a little bit. So I'm just going to play around with that title and... You know, I really can't decide if I want to have it up here, have a photo on the bottom, which now that I think about it might have been better because it would have covered up that big gold blob you can see right there. But in the end, I end up sticking it here in the bottom corner, which is fine. And, and then I kind of play around with do I want to flip the gold and have the gold kind of like up and down and up and down. Um, but I end up going with all the gold on the bottom. So luckily with the letters that I chose, except for the W, you could kind of reverse them if you needed to. Um, but I stuck with what I had intended in the first place. And this needed some blue. It just, I don't know, it needed some blue there. So I had to add a little bit extra in. <laughs> okay, so let's get the photo down on the page. And then my kind of my next problem was that gold blob was really becoming a situation for me. It was really bothering me. It was just right in the middle of the page. So I kind of thought about how I could maybe extend my title to be more than just snow or snow day or you know something boring like that. It's, titles are not my forte. It's like the worst thing ever for me is to come up with some fun catchy title. Um, I don't know if it's because I have a million scrapbook pages and I feel like maybe I've done that before but I'm gonna cut some of these really cool hand drawn letters out of that paper there from Crate Paper and maybe try to pretty those up a little if I can add a little more color because everything is still feeling pretty white to me and as much as I like the white on white look I cannot do it myself it's not my thing so I'm just gonna kind of start with the one word cold and then I like this little cutout cut it from like the three by four kind of a cut apart sheet from Snow and Coco so I'm gonna cut that out and try to figure out where I'm gonna put that and what else do I got here I'm trying to fool around with some of these more of those cut aparts and see if I can make those work and I'm, I'm still really thinking how the heck am I going to cover up the gold blob and I decided I wanted to add this kind of like little sentiment underneath my photo so I'm going to stick that down here and then these the words cold I'm going to cut and stick down and then try to pretty those up in a little bit as well because it is still pretty white and I thought oh I can hang this this little flag, I thought I could use that to cover up my gold tight little blob, but nope, it was just, something wasn't working for me. Sometimes that just happens, right? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold I've had for about a month, so 
um, right near the end of it. But anyway, I decided to code out another one of these cold words and thought if I put cold, cold snow, I can happily cover up my gold blob and fill in that kind of open area of the cup where the cup file is anyway. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone. And uh, yeah, so we'll see how that turns out in the end. I ended up not using both word, both cold, cold. So, but it was a good thought. It just seems to be a little too busy with the two colds there. So then I decided I'm going to grab my new Prima watercolors that I have and add a little bit of color to my word cold. And I love this color here. I think it's called pink grapefruit. It's really, really pretty. I think it's in the pastel watercolor set. So I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of watercolor paint to those letters and alternate the colors a bit. Again, just like embossing, I am also not a watercolor expert. So if you're looking for me to teach you, oh, sorry, I banged my camera again. You can see I am not an expert. I'm going to go ahead and keep on just going. I have this like pretty mint green kind of color. And these kind of go along with the colors that are in the cup file. And just trying to alternate a little bit. And you can see I have a little swatch. This is like a peach kind of color. I think actually this is the pink lemonade color. And then more of like a, I use a couple colors of blue in there which is kind of good. It adds just a little more color. It's not so white, but again, that's pretty busy. I have these pink buttons I really want to use. These are doodle bug buttons. I thought I could add them into the center of some of the cup files and into the words, but they're just a little too big, I think, for uh, where I want to put them. And then I'm just digging through my stash, as you can see, flipping a few things out that I think I might use to embellishment on my page. I add one of these Heidi Swap tags and behind just to bring a little bit of the gold. I'll put the date on there, trim it down a little and put the date and then kind of just stick that with the clip to the top of my photo and that kind of helps get that in there and then I have these like cool little acrylic uh, snowflakes. I think I got these at a dollar store. Yeah you can see the dollar store package there but they're not super they're, they're thick but not super thick any more than a wood veneer would be so I kind of just added a couple of those I'll add around my title to get kind of like a snowflakey effect down there and then I'm like desperately trying to like <laughs> peel off that gold blob but it just didn't work you'll see here just a close-up of the cut file and you can see I ended up just typing out some words or actually that's cut out from the cut apart sheet and just sewed over top so that solved my gold blob problem and yeah that's how my page came together I think it turned out pretty cute so thanks Audrey for having me today for day six now if you want to grab this frosted window paints cut file free head over to just neck use the code frozen free today only till midnight and it's yours for free there's the address for you and that's it so have a great day